You're listening to the Geek Saga Podcast. This episode features audio that was recorded at a discussion panel at DragonCon 2024. Please consider backing us at patreon.com slash geeksaga underscore entertainment for early access to these podcasts and other perks. Me sitting here for an hour talking about Walking Dead without cursing is going to be real tough. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Dragon Con! That's it. More time. Day one! Woo! There we go! Welcome to Walking Dead Expanded Universe. I'm your moderator, Michael Frost. These are my fellow panelists who are going to introduce themselves. And we're going to discuss the Walking Dead Expanded Universe, how things link together, what your favorites are, what their favorites are, and a whole lot of information I probably don't know myself. I'm Doug Burby, really for DragonCon here. I write post-demon apocalyptic military urban fantasy. So focusing on that, my day job is uh, I'm a retired army guy, and now I work for the government doing advanced military technology development. Whole different set of panels to talk about that later. Really the reason they got me here is because I got a crowbar and an AR-15 and a biological tattoo, so they said you must be a walking dead guy. So, uh, ab- absolutely I am. Hi, my name is Hanako Ricks. I'm the creator and host of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast and the Walking Dead Expanded Universe is one of our favorite things to talk about. Hey, I'm Tara. Um, you can find me online pretty much everywhere at A Geek Saga. I do have a couple different podcasts, the main one being the Geek Saga podcast. I do also have a series with a uh, website slash YouTube channel called The Geek Geekiary. I am not allowed to say what that series is called on this panel because it's too early in the day, but it's called the starts with a b ends with ing dead <laughs> well good morning i think a good place to start is since the original series going back now to 2010 if i remember right mm-hmm. so we're back uh, coming up on 14 years into this universe from the original series where do you think this expanded universe is actually going to go to i think it's a good place to start here we now have covered other groups we've covered the um, the group of the choppers the CRM. Oh, CRM. thank you the crm uh we've covered west coast east coast south europe new york so where do you think we're going to go from here at this point i'll be honest sometimes i don't even think they know <laughs> for real I, I i think like i keep waiting for the universe to kind of end but they keep coming up with these you know Side quest. Spin-off. Yeah, side quests. Yeah, exactly. Good. That's good. That's great. I love it. They keep coming up with these side quests. And I'm not saying, like, I still enjoy, I've enjoyed certain of the, like, more recent spin-offs. I really like the Rick and Michelle one, for instance. But I feel like they put out a lot of like, seeds and they're just kind of trying to see which ones stick. And I could be wrong. Maybe there is somebody in, you know, the production team who has, like, some grand massive plan. But to me, it kind of seems like they don't. <laughs> I just really want them to get to a point where everybody reunites all the people who are on the different spinoffs yeah. especially with the fact that we have Rick and Michonne back now technically like I know that they've extended Daryl Dixon through a third season and I've heard rumors that there's going to be a fourth Rick is home Michonne is home I need Daryl to go home so but beyond that I, I don't know I mean with it being a zombie apocalypse there are a lot of stories that they could tell because you know up until Daryl went to France the rest of the world was largely untouched in this universe and we didn't know what was going on. So I like the fact that they're expanding and showing us what's happening in other parts, but if it's not gonna all eventually come together, then it's kind of like, I feel like you're milking it. Mm -hmm. Which if the story is good, I don't have a problem with it. I'm loving the Daryl Dixon show. Obviously I love the Ricky Michonne show, (laughs) but Dead City is kind of, in between for me, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're a lot nicer about Dead City than the Dead, 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 Dead City, whatever yeah. they're calling it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so with that, the, the one thing I did like about Dead City is the disaster porn setting environment. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. And yeah. where are they going other settings? The Europe thing's interesting. I like the medieval aspect, especially in season one, showing the castles and stuff, and I'm like, perfect mm-hmm. for the apocalypse. I don't know if the show we're talking about bringing them together or keeping it fresh with different environments. We haven't had things like what's going on like Key West. That could be an interesting (laughs) type of season inside of there where survivors are boat based or something like that. Uh, Or New Orleans, you know, what happened in New Orleans? The levees break, flooded that out. Just 
different environmental aspects and to go in there. But it can't be Daryl, like on a frequent flyer thing, flopping around, you know, the countries inside of there. And some of the other characters themselves from the other seasons maybe bringing some of those uh, back around. But, you know, you'll never see Disney World in the zombie apocalypse. They probably can't afford to do that. <laughs> but uh, I would love to see Disney World and, you know, survivors that were you know, Mickey Mouse costumes running around. Can killing you people. imagine spending the awesome. zombie apocalypse in the princess castle? <laughs> Three zombies walking I mean, I love the idea of New Orleans, but I'll be honest, like, because I have such a deep, like, attachment to that city, I would be very concerned that they would not do <clears throat> justice in, yeah. in a walking dead show, because I think sometimes they do things really well, and sometimes they're really bad. <laughs> I, think they New in a video game. I think so, too. Yes, just maybe maybe not all the Walking Dead showrunners. I don't know. Some of the Walking Dead showrunners, you guys, are really, really good, and some of them are really not, or have gotten, like, we're good in the beginning, but aren't so great anymore. So, I don't know. Like I said, there's I really like the Rick and Michonne show, but, like, comparing that to Deady Dead Dead City, uh, whatever they're calling it, is, like, it's not even apples to oranges. It's, like, apples to raisins or something. <laughs> I was thinking of rotting fruit somewhere, but okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and as a New Yorker, I have a different take on the show. Is I was so excited because in this genre, nobody ever touches New York. I mean, we've gotten earthquakes, tidal waves. We've been nuked a couple of times. <laughs> aliens, no one ever wants to get aliens. 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 The whole but, city froze in that one movie. Right, yeah, yeah, the zombies <laughs> are afraid of us, and we're not that scared. Okay, maybe the maybe the A train is, but I'm not the A train. <laughs> you know, we're not that scary, and so they actually brought. Great, we're gonna get the zombies. And I'm just looking at the line. Where did Gimple find his soundstage and set design? Because I don't know what part of the city this is supposed to be, but it's not one part I've ever been in. <laughs> I don't know. New York is looking suspiciously like Atlanta these days. Yeah. I, I didn't want to go there, but I swear I heard some Georgian accents. <laughs> <laughs> but they filmed their city in New Jersey. They didn't film here. Well, Camden's oh, they didn't? pretty much dead anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to whip out some Patterson jokes, so we're going to move on to yeah. that. <laughs> I lived in Monmouth County for a while, so. And you understand, okay. <laughs> you brought some very good points up. Is there's so many places that Gimbal could be going with this. And I agree with you. It feels very much like he's sitting in an office somewhere flinging darts at a board. And <laughs> so he's going, hey, look, two darts at that spot. Let's try that. You look back, um, the record Michonne was supposed to be, what, six episodes and done. It actually, it's supposed to be a movie, technically. Yeah, three movies. technically, yeah, three movies. You go back, it's supposed to be three movies. Mm -hmm. And the one that I thought had the most promise was The World Beyond, because we got to see something outside of the core group. I like the idea of, hey, let's just go see what's happening out in the world. Because other than CRM and, and um, the Commonwealth going further back, or even the governor to go far enough back, it always, to me, was lacking in the universe. This happened over 65 days, if you look at the timeline for the entire first season. This whole thing went from zero to 60 in 65 days. I get society collapsed, but a whole lot of other things globally had to have happened that we never got to see. And we were promised that in Fear. Fear was supposed to show me the beginning, yeah. and all of a sudden in the middle of the what, third episode, that eh, never mind, just a fast forward. Yeah. Yeah, you know, all of a sudden it's happening. What? Oh, don't even get me started on Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, I, I, I agree there. <laughs> so what I would love to see, simple things. There are scores of nuclear power plants in this country alone. That anybody who knows about nuclear power knows if we all turn to zombies within about 10 to 30 days, every one of them has good old-fashioned China syndrome. They melt down because those cooling towers, the fuel rods have to do, I think, all scramming. The whole bunch of you have to do to keep the plant from basically becoming Fukushima. And if you remember what happened in Japan with Fukushima, picture 60 of those in this country. There's a whole lot of slots in this nation that have no zombies and no humans. It's done. And will be for a couple thousand years. Or what about our Navy? Does it all happen in Los Angeles where they claim it all started? Or it happened at Pastor if we, some of the subtext from Dow Dixon. Wouldn't there have been cruise ships out? Remember COVID? All these cruise ships sailing around. Where are all these people? Are yeah. there ships full of zombies floating around out there someplace? You know? Well, I know that they have touched a little bit on some of those things. Like, um, I'm not sure if anyone watched the short. Oh, the yes, shorts? the webisode, yeah. the flight yes. six, whatever. Yeah, the, yeah. And and the one um, dead in the water. Yeah. That's oh, the I didn't see that one. Okay, yeah. so Dead in the Water was like a six-part miniseries, okay. and it talked. It basically gave us the background story of Riley, who was Teddy's right-hand person 
and um, kind of the start of what it was like being on the Navy sub when all of this went down. Yeah. And one of the places that they were told to um, nuke in the beginning was Chicago. Right, the, 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 the it was, protocol. It was, yeah, it was supposed to be like ground zero. Right. Yeah, so I know that they've touched on some of those things and then you see a little bit of like the cruise ship type stuff in the um, Tales of the Walking Dead when we get Alpha's backstory, you know, mm -hmm. they're on a, a little ship there and then you see the remnants of an old cruise ship on the uh, Rick and Michonne show. So mm -hmm. they kind of tease those little things, but there are other certain things that I personally would like to know, like, here we are in 2024. The timeline of The Walking Dead is about right around 20 years now. Yeah. We still don't know how this thing started. Like, how is it that everyone was living a perfectly normal life and then all of a sudden the world goes to crap? And how the heck does the virus spread? Like, so exactly. we, I get that once, you know, that everybody has it, so if you die, you become a walker. Right. But like, what, what about people who were like in a sub underwater right. and they don't come up for like, 30 days after it starts. How did they possibly, like, how, how is it spread to them at this point? So I, like, there's question. gotta be some sort of immunity somewhere, somehow. And I know they touched on that with, um, or they tried to touch on that in Fear the Walking Dead, the immunity thing. They were trying to see if, like, kids born after the fact were immune or whatever. And it turns out they weren't, which I think is, I think that goes against what's in the comics. If I'm, I thought in the comics, uh, anybody born at, like, after the fact, like, Judith would be immune if she was still alive in the comics. But I could be wrong about that. I never finished the comics after Andrea died, and I'm going off of what some other people have told me. <laughs> Yeah, they've, they've touched on these things, but like you said, why do we still not know? I, I, it's like, are there zombies in Hawaii? <laughs> you yeah. know, because what? we've got all these different islands. Like, did it hit all of them? Are there zombies in Japan? Are there zombies in the Caribbean? I, I, I want to know. This is exactly what, what I want to know, is uh, you're touching the same thing. Even more remote than that, what about the research station on Antarctica? They stay there for six months, mm. like she said, and it's cold. And we all know that viruses, a lot of viruses can't handle cold. So mm. did this handle the Arctic and Antarctic? All these ships, all the islands, and even things like, and, and I think the CRM is probably the closest example. Because there's been a lot of, if you read all the subtext, it's the remnants of the US government to a large extent, mm. which has only been in other, my film. We know in real life, in, in our world, in theory, our government has what they call COG, or continuity of government, that can be implemented in as little as 18 minutes in the case of nuclear attacks. So there's places that important people go, or they think they're important, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> places where government officials go, there's bunkers, there's the, the command and control centers. If those can be implemented in 18 minutes, how over 65 days is the entire government not even have something functioning that we don't see? You know, the CRM seems more to me to be some rogue force that survives. Hey, look, I have all the weapons, let's just band together. Uh, kind of like the Monroe Republican in, in Revolution. <laughs> but that's really, I think, what I want to see. I want to see where's everybody else? What, what is going on? And is this, well, like, I think you said, where is it going to end? At some point, one of two things has to happen. The zombies are going to take the rest of us out, or we're going to rebuild civilization. There's really only two choices. Yeah. Here. I think with that is you gotta look at where the showrunners are, are going and what they wanna focus on. So you have season one, series one, first group. You've got Rick and Michonne, you've got Daryl, some of the main characters, and they, and they tie inside of there. But they jumped so far ahead in the timelines. So now they, it's kind of in a kit bag where if you wanna find this other stuff, you have to do something like Fear of the Dead. It, now you've gotta go, you need to test the water with a whole new group, you gotta start it over, different environment, you gotta reset, but people like the core characters. But when you jumped everything, like 20 years forward, it, that makes it really hard from, you know, and you know from writing stories, you can't, you, you, now am I breaking my own canon by mm -hmm. doing things? So now you gotta be really careful what you're doing. Now you got the CRM, you know, the, but you had the Commonwealth. So it's the story about, do you want to focus on environment or do you want to focus on characters? Yeah. Because right now I think they're very character focused, but now you have to tie something <clears throat> together. And the farther away, like Daryl goes, how does he get back to Rick and Michelle? Mm -hmm. It's an apocalypse. Even in like the 1700s, it would take like four months to get from yeah. one city to another city. You know, Daryl come back from, they, okay, so we're going to jump another three years? 
by the time he figures out a way to get back, that's even possible. So for that, and I always thought the show was character based inside yeah. of there. Like, who's everybody's favorite bad guy? <laughs> Hagan, right? Yeah. Everybody's got a favorite bad guy. Who's your favorite hero? Daryl. Mich yeah, Michelle. Michelle and Daryl. Those are the other two. Most people don't know the rest. Carol. 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 There you go. You got Carol, you know. I don't know, though. Carol has gotten really dark at times, which is why I don't, I would not call her my favorite hero. Is she an awesome character? Absolutely. But I think if we're going to go like hero, it's Michonne. Carol has been dark. I love that darkness, but. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> for like, for me, I, I like, I look at Rick. Rick's my, you know, Rick's just a mediocre villain in my book. <laughs> yeah. Mostly because every, Rick is just like somebody you hang around with to die. It, you know, but everyone loves Negan. Everybody likes the bad guys. I love that about the apocalypse stuff. The CRM pieces, that's a maturation of the universe, I think, because eventually, you know, we start to rebuild. I, I see that. So, villains, not villains, but the guys like Negan, the guys like the governor, anybody in there, those are the cool characters inside of there. But when you jump back again for this new environment, you got to start all over. They really could have shortened the Negan storyline in the main show by at least half a season, if you yeah, ask me. Yeah. <laughs> and expanded some of the others. Some yeah, of them got yeah. uh, short changed. What was the way station? What was the train station one? The Cannibals. Terminus. Yeah, Terminus. Terminus. Like, I love that storyline. Yes. I would have loved way more backstory. And they, they spent so much time building it they up. They did. Great and then setting, one great episode. environment. Yeah, Rick and his malcontents just come in and just like slaughter people. And they're, and they're the good guys. Well, so. there's a theme going. <laughs> yeah, but you just described like five different seasons. <laughs> How many reconstruction civilizations did Rick kill? <laughs> One, two, three, four. And he just walks around and kills everybody just trying to get by, you know? People just sitting there and clocking in for work. Rick and his bunch of malcontents come in. That's actually a really good idea for a panel. Like Rick as the villain. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> Rick versus zombies. Who did more damage to society? <laughs> That's true. I might want to take a moment to disagree with you on Carol, though, because, it, yeah, she gets very dark, and the reason Carol's my favorite hero, and I am going to call her a hero, Carol gets things done. <laughs> we, we, Carol will do the things that nobody wants them. Remember? Look at the flowers, Lizzie. Yeah. Look at the flowers, Lizzie. Any of us really think we could walk up behind a 10-year-old and just put it down because, well, it has to get done? Carol then you know what? Things need to be done. So with Carol, like everybody in the apocalypse has PTSD, right? I mean, that's kind of like a set thing. She came into the apocalypse with PTSD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With spousal abuse and everything. So she was in a dire... She found her strength right. in yeah. the apocalypse. And she, she wanted to help other people survive. She wasn't touchy-feely about it, but I always thought she did care about the group, except oh, for yeah, the yeah. where it's like, I'm going to live in my house, I'm just going to kill anybody who knocks on my door sort of thing. But she was damaged before everyone else became damaged. Yeah. So it kind of compounded. So it, I actually really liked her story because it was like you saw her break at the beginning, mm -hmm. repair herself, the apocalypse broke her, and then she found her place yeah. uh, from there. So like, for her character, and, and you're right, she's tough. Could be a villain. I would not call her a villain by any yeah. means. No, uh, I just think that she, like, she's she's not the sort of um, golden hero that she's not the golden hero that like they they make Michonne seem yeah. like. Yeah, like you Michonne know, and that. Daryl are heart, right? They're they're both heart characters to me. You know, Michonne even from her early say everything she did was out of some form of love for somebody, and. Daryl loved them all. He wanted to take care of everybody, and he knew he could, but then he was also raised as a lone wolf. So he had a lot of conflict in that character that I thought yeah. was really nice. I see a lot of heart in Carol as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I really use like heroes and villains when yeah. talking about these characters yeah. because you're in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Even the best mm -hmm. of people, you're going to have to do something that's going to compromise your morals mm -hmm. in order to survive in this world. And the thing with Carol, I think, that I didn't appreciate in the beginning and that I appreciate now, like when she would have her, her moments of crisis and she would, you know, take off from the group and I can't do this and she was so quote unquote whiny, she mm -hmm. got on my nerves so much then because <laughs> I was like, I was like, your, your people need you. Why are you acting like this? And then going back and just kind of reevaluating, I realized she was really fighting to hold on to what humanity she had because Carol 
is one of those people, I think, if she has to go cold turkey and just do some damage, she would be the first one to do it. Like, I think she would yeah. probably surpass Rick if she had to. Oh, yeah. And I think the thing with her is that she is fighting to hold on to that humanity so that she doesn't have to do those types of things. And then you have people like the saviors who come and smack your kid around and steal your wedding ring. And then she's like, okay, I just got to burn all y'all now. <laughs> but, but Things you get done? <laughs> it, she, she gets things done, but I think the, the great thing about her character is that she does still have a conscience about it. She does still feel a lot of remorse about it. And for a lot of people, I think, you would think that that type of, you know, holding on to your humanity would allow you to or cause you to die quicker in this world. And I think it's one of the reasons why she has survived so long. And you said that you're, you got really frustrated with her when she would kind of like wander mm -hmm. off. So the the one time that this happened, um, in the it was during the Negan storyline when she like went and lived in that little house. Yes. Um, I blame that entirely on Morgan. Morgan is the show ruiner. Every show he wanders back into in this universe, he makes it worse. Um, so I I've always blamed that Carol disappearing into her little like farmhouse. Uh, somewhere off and I mean it was it wasn't it was like in between all the different yeah. settlements that were that were fighting Negan at that point but like that's entirely Morgan's fault. <laughs> I also wonder a lot of how much written in like all right the actors actresses and all this like were they working on other shows it's like we got to write you in a little bit things we got to do your whole season in like four days and in, inside of this house sort of thing so mm. I always wonder that when people just like strangely get put aside and they come back later. I'm like, what? what oh, I think work? it was for sure a choice they made. And and like, I'm not, I'm, I'm being lighthearted about the Morgan thing, but I mentioned like, oh, I should not get into Fear the Walking Dead. Fear the Walking Dead, the first season wasn't great, but it got really good in the second and I think most, if not all, of the third season. And then it was like they killed off Madison and they brought in Morgan and the show just went, got worse and worse and worse from then on. So <laughs> like, I'm making light about Morgan but that's that's my my tie-in of like and then Morgan came back to The Walking Dead and he's all like I'm not killing anybody and he gets Carol to want you know go off and disappear into her house and not be the bad ASS that she is <laughs> um for however long like <laughs> but Carol was already struggling before Morgan she was yeah she was Morgan um came back so so he's a catalyst for character destruction <laughs> Show destruction. So then the entire show. apocalypse yeah. happened because Morgan was around. <laughs> <laughs> he is the one who saved, who helped like save Rick in the in the very first season. So like, if we're talking about how Rick isn't really a hero, he's actually a villain. Going like, then it's it's all Morgan's fault from the very beginning, you guys. All right, new poll. Who's done more damage to society, zombies, Rick, or Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> Still think it's Rick, honestly. Still it's Rick. But but if you if you want to take it back to the very beginning, and Rick wouldn't exist if Morgan hadn't saved him. <clears throat> but also, Rick would not be the person he is without Shane. Oh God, yeah. So. Funny enough, I was watching a movie that had John Bernthal in it, uh, Fury. It's it's a World War II movie, and he plays a jerk in that movie too and I was watching it with one of my friends he was like I just I hate this actor he is always such a jerk like he like my friend would not show up about it it was actually really funny and I was like why do you dislike him so much like he's I'm sure he's a perfectly nice person and everything and he he was like it all goes back to Shane I can never look at this actor without seeing Shane and I was like wow okay well that was like 14 years ago my dude you need to get over that <laughs> but that means he did a great job right exactly exactly I'm gonna go on a limb on a video I'm gonna say I actually like Shane Shane is Carol with one extra flaw. Shane is Carol who wants his best friend's wife. <laughs> you th think about it, other than other than that part of his personality, he was another one. Remember the, the kneecapping? They Carl needed the drugs, mm. and, and being the guy of girth myself, I freely admit that if somebody who can run faster, yeah, I need to be the bait. <laughs> it's like the old joke about the two people in the woods. You know, bear's coming, guy gets out of his sneakers. You think you can outrun a bear? Nope, I run you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what, so with Shane, you look at the characters, unlike Carol, who had damage to run, I think Shane was the one character that showed that responded completely negative. Yeah. So his, his stressors made him into more of the villain character much quicker. Yeah. You know, so where everyone else was doing their adjustment period, his, his character didn't adjust. It just, 
his adaption was violent. He, he just switched over to pain and suffering versus trying to mm -hmm. work stuff out. Where Rick at that time was supposed to be the calming guy coming in before he becomes a really bad leader and gets everybody killed all the time. <laughs> but that's just that's just me. But uh, so yeah. But Shane, I saw was the, they were actually trying to do. They needed somebody who broke like right away. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think they're trying to do that with Shane, showing how a lot of people were responding differently. And he wanted to sleep with his, uh, you know, friend's wife too. So. I do think he cared about Carl separately. He, he though, did. Sure, they, I mean, they hooked up when they thought he was dead. So I yeah. mean, it's gonna, he comes back, kind of ruins the party. But uh, I, I mean, yeah, I, I get, I get being upset about that. I really do. I just, you know, maybe don't react the way Shane reacted. Just yeah, saying. that's true. <laughs> but I also think it, it wasn't just about Lori and Carl. The reason why Shane kind of <clears throat> took the turn he took. Rick comes in, and because he did what he did in Atlanta and helped the group get back to them. It's like almost immediately the group started looking yeah. to Rick for yeah. leadership when Shane has been there the whole time. So I think it was a combination yeah. Yeah. of all of that. Like Shane is like, okay, so I'm the one that's been here, even with Lori and Carl. I'm the one who got you out of Atlanta. I'm the one who's kept you guys safe. I'm the one who's kept this group safe. And all of a sudden, as he says, Officer Friendly comes in and now all of a sudden you guys are following behind him. I mean... It's understandable what he what he kind of goes through. Yeah. It's just classic beta dog syndrome. Everything's great. He's basking in all the glory, and here comes the hero. And, oh. See again, Rick. Rick's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See? Rick know. is the reason Shane is the way he is. Rick's the reason, you know, the government's in stand up, the crops all wilted. All <laughs> I do have a question since we're talking since we're talking a little bit about season one, um, and but this I'm I'm going to move this into the more recent shows as well. So in season one, remember how the walkers they were like using rocks to break glass, they were mm -hmm. climbing fences, and then of course from season two on in The Walking Dead up until I think the very last season, they were just the shambling, you know walkers that they, they didn't they certainly did not use tools or climb fences or whatever but then in the last season of the walking dead when the, the ren fair when they were the georgia ren the fair variants. yeah um they all of a sudden there's walkers now who are doing those things again and of course we've got daryl in france which i think they're did they show i can't remember did they show some of that in france too the walkers that do things <laughs> I, I'm just, I want to say I, I do remember. I remember. I'm trying to remember which storyline it was. That there was discussion of are the walkers learning and yeah. the evolution thing going. And, and, yeah, and I guess like that. My question is like, has how why it's been so long that I could understand the idea of them learning if it had happened like over a year or something at the beginning. But like now, these walkers are it, most of the because they're all like fresher looking too. So there is it something about the post-apocalypse or is it the experiments that was it the CR no the Commonwealth the, the, the one CR that Jada's the, so, no it wasn't the CR, CR, it was CR. CR. too many C's eh. yeah. pick, pick a different letter guys um, the, the experiments they were doing did they do some experiments and like let some walkers out and then those walkers turn people and so it has something to do with that like where is my explanation for this I kind of look at it as it's probably just a random thing with the walkers. Just like with people, you have different, like all of us are humans, but some of us have certain abilities that others don't. Yeah. And I kind of look at it that way because if you think about it, even in between there in Alexandria, the day that Deanna died, she died in an upstairs bedroom. The walkers had to have climbed the stairs to get to her. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's necessarily that they're just not able to do the things I just think that it wasn't a focus yeah. for the showrunners at the time because we had all these other stories but now if you're coming back to the different walkers and the way that they behave you we had it in the last couple of seasons of the main show you had a little bit of it in Fear the Walking Dead you have the walkers that are being experimented on in Daryl Dixon I think for whatever reason they're starting to focus on the walkers again. Mm -hmm. And maybe that maybe that circle is about to close and they're gonna show us what it is they're trying to tell us. Yeah. But I don't think it was just, like that's one of the things that bothered me when they were 
promoting the last couple of seasons. They kept talking about the variant walkers. They're like, oh, these walkers can climb. These walkers can do. And I was like, do they not remember Jenny walking up the stairs trying to open up the door? Yeah, yeah, exactly. In like the very <laughs> first season. So it always confused me when they talked about the variants and how these are new. And I'm like, they're not new. Go back and look at your own canon. Right? <laughs> so. what, I, what I always try to keep in mind is like, this was originally just supposed to be a mini series, yeah, <laughs> on AMC, yeah, and uh, and how much it's it's grown and they've had to build since mm -hmm. then. So, but yeah, the, the Walker thing always kind of throws me because even other genre horror movie types that have a lot of zombies and stuff in there, they're usually pretty clear and concise. Yes, you know, because are they shambler zombies? Are they rage zombies? Fast zombies? Smart zombies? Mm -hmm. They usually kind of set that rule somehow up front, mm -hmm. and they never really did it. In the Walking Dead, no. just like they never used the term zombie, and that right. was intentional because yeah. mm -hmm. um, they had never existed. Otherwise, you know, the, the apocalypse takes a whole different tent. Yeah, I mean, everybody here knows how do you kill a zombie? In the head, man. You stab him in the head, right? Even if it's your your best friend from next door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The apocalypse for zombies. We've all got this stuff. <laughs> be able to knock this out pretty quick, right? <laughs> so everybody with a baseball bat and a shovel, you've taken care of your neighborhood. It doesn't spread. But I don't know if they really planned that far ahead because the miniseries was just supposed to be that but right. yes other people cover that really clearly mm -hmm. in their you know what type of zombie is what's the rules how do they set it up that was never never done yeah and then also the post credit scene for the world beyond when it ended the whole thing with the scientists in france getting killed mm -hmm. reanimating you cannot tell me that that scientist that that Walker scientists did not realize what had happened to yeah. her because the whole way that she behaved, she she wakes up, she reanimates, and she looks around and she starts panicking and runs to the door and is trying to get out. This is someone who is still conscious in that brain. You can't tell me yeah. otherwise. So it's got to play into the future of this of this world somehow because other than that, why put that there? Right, and I, I guess that's you know. I feel, I just feel like, like you said, how they were pushing how the variants were going to be existing in the later season, last season, later seasons, whatever. I just feel like now the, the, the Walking Dead, the main show, has been over since, what was it, 20, 20, 21, 21, 22? But of course, like, we, we know that there was a pretty big break because of COVID and everything. So, like, <clears throat> the Walking Dead has been over for a couple of years. We've already got dead, dead city I, I hate that name so like really guys you could not come up with anything better um but we've already gotten dead dead city the rick and michonne show the first season of daryl dixon <laughs> the, the rishon show if yes, you want to use go. the ship name i don't what did, actually i don't even remember the name off the top of my head of the rick and michonne show now because that's the one the ones who look thank you I, I just call it the rick and michonne show um but so we've gotten all these new like seasons and we still even in those ones, like, it's been few and far between about the variants thing or any sort of information. And it's like, I don't know. Like, I, again, I go back to, I just feel like there's someone in an office, like, they're on those little sticky hands at the wall. And it's like, ooh, that one's stuck. What does it say on it? Oh, variants this season. Oh, that, that one's stuck. What does it say on it? Oh, we're doing away with variants for a while. We got to focus on, on zombies whose blood is... Uh, acidic or whatever it is in the Daryl Dixon show, you know? No, they're just setting up the next expanded universe, The Walking Dead Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> in and which Rick comes in and murders all of the evolving zombies. I think it's a good time to bring the audiences a little bit. What's your one character, not from the core group, but anyone we've brushed on over the years, over the series, that you think you'd like to see be a focus of a mini series going three and four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Walking Dead will never die. I would like to say more of the kingdom and what brought the kingdom together mm -hmm. as far as like all because whenever they introduced them, they already were the kingdom. They already had Ezekiel was running it with the tiger and all that. But they never really brought up how they became what they were, how he became the, the leader of them and I would watch the crap out of a show yeah. that has Ezekiel in a zoo and also anything with Jerry. Like, I want to yeah. see their bro Jerry. show so yeah. much. Yeah. I love Jerry. Yeah. That was one of those, like, if this character dies, I will never watch oh. any of these shows oh, again. Oh, th those last few episodes, I was like, if y'all kill him, we are going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in Ezekiel and the King, such a beautiful character. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the build up in there, 
in the kingdom. You're right, the backstory there, completely missing. We got the governor's backstory throughout the season, so they, they fed that in there. Ezekiel, not really, but as far as like a ridiculous apocalypse character, you know, with the tiger and all that, but so well done. Yeah. So much depth. Absolutely. That's a also, beautiful character. That, that coming does. back to the hero conversation, I think, like, have we ever, like, Ezekiel's probably one of the purest souls on that entire show. I don't think, I'm sure he's done some things that, you know, in, in real life, like, bef- like pre-apocalypse would make a person really bad. But when it comes down to it, I, I would actually say Ezekiel's possibly one of, if not the purest well, character. Well, he built I a mean, very strong... I mean, he had a strong, tiger. Yeah. yeah. Follow but them. what was the name he of the? a strong, honest community together yeah. too. No, 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 so... not the tiger. Sorry. What was the... you mentioned it? The show where they they had Alpha's backstory as one of the episodes. Oh, Tales of the Walking Dead. Yes, game. thank you. Mm-hmm. That, like, if they're not going to do a whole series on it, I love the idea of at least yeah. an, an episode of yeah. like show me Ezekiel in his zoo, okay? <laughs> show me Ezekiel and Jerry having their meat cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> show me the rescue of Shiva. Yeah, yeah. like. Yeah. The establishment of that relationship. Yeah, yeah that, that, and, and there are just enough there from the books to actually base it on. You can expand it from there easily. Do you guys think that Egan should die, or did he deserve a redemption? Uh, she asked if we think Negan should, should die. die. Like, yeah. Should Rick have slit his throat? And, oh, okay. okay. Um, or did he deserve? Uh, did you like his it's redemption? A hot, it's a hot debate for us. Yeah. Yeah. So, so think Negan should have died as a villain. We're coming to you as a family. We need but help. what do you think? <laughs> so I, I'm gonna Are I'm gonna put it out. Now? <laughs> I'm gonna put it out there. So I also attend Atlanta Comic Convention, and for the last two years, we have done a panel about Negan's redemption arc. I am one of those people who firmly believes that he has earned his redemption. Again, as we were talking earlier about heroes and villains. There are some things that we have to, in in a zombie apocalypse, there are things that we're gonna have to do in order to survive. Now, did he overstep on some of those things? Yes, he did. But there are some other things that, you know, the debates in the fandom where if you really pay attention to the story and the dialogue and to just what his character is, there's room for debate about whether or not he is actually a bad character. I think for anyone to go through what he went through and not go to the evil, you know, the evil side for even just a little bit, that will be hard pressed. I mean, this is a man who was not, he was not an evil person before the apocalypse. He wasn't the best person, (laughs) but I mean, we all know people who are like full of ego, cheat on their wives and just do like, just regular horrible things. He's a horrible person in that sense that doesn't make him an evil monster. The things that happened to him afterwards when he figured out, okay, I need to learn to protect some of these people, like with Laura and her father who helped him and everything that happened to her. He went into those modes to start protecting himself and to protect other people because of what he lost. Now, the thing with Glenn and the thing with Abraham, yes, he went a little far with that, especially because he was not remorseful about it. But we have to remember, they went in and killed almost a hundred of his people, unprovoked. And these people were sleeping and not able to defend themselves. Because Rick's the bad guy. <laughs> I was so, waiting for that. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and I, I wouldn't even say that he's a bad guy because, again, let we're going to go. I also have a what if Maggie Green, uh, Maggie Ree is the next TWD villain. We've done that panel as well because that whole thing with the saviors and, oh, we'll go kill them and then you give us what you were giving them, that was all Maggie's idea. So Maggie, in a sense, started all of that with that whole group. And I will defend that until the end of days. So I'm one of those people, I really do think that he has earned his redemption arc. And one of the things that really bothers me about the way Dead City has played in the first six episodes that we've seen is that you have Maggie at the end of the main show telling Negan, okay, I can't forgive you, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate you anymore because I don't want my son to see that this has this kind of control over me. And then here it is approximately seven or eight years later because Herschel is now a teenager, and that's exactly what you've done. 
This man has left you alone. He has taken his wife and his child, moved to another community, no contact. But because of everything that's going on, now you have to come back in and you're doing all of this. It, it, it's one of the things that grates me about Dead City. It's like, Maggie, I understand that you're upset, but you are not a saint. You have done things as well. It's time to, if not let it go, just say, okay, this is what it is. I need to move forward because now she's about to have a whole different set of problems with her son because she can't learn to let that anger go. So with, with Negan, yeah, absolutely. There are some other characters who I've seen on there who I was like, no, I wouldn't give them a, a second chance. The governor, absolutely oh not. Because he was never remorseful about the stuff that he did and the people that he hurt. At least with Negan, yes, he puts on a front in front of all his people because you have to when you're the leader. Because other than that, what's going to happen? People are going to mutiny and then he's going to find himself in the same position that the last leader that he ousted was in. So, yeah, I, I, will, I will defend Negan's redemption all day long. <laughs> you're right, though. He knew when to turn it off. Mm -hmm. He knew when it was done. So what's really funny is I, I think last year we had a panel on here called uh, Politics During the Apocalypse. So, <laughs> so Negan came up. Brilliant panel because part of the thing is, you know, and like I said, I'm a retired Army guy, so we know a lot of military history, right? So leaders and leadership traits were different throughout <laughs> different phases of civilization, right? So like Genghis Khan, who lives throughout history, violent, ruthless, bloodthirsty killer but created a civilization started setting some rules at each phase in civilization you know you got the Visigoths you know or even Vikings or things like that the leadership traits early on in civilization developments are basically ruthless strength mm -hmm. right you took what you needed to build for your small group and eventually when you started getting into agriculture and trade and things like that different leadership skills developed Negan was the leader that was needed at the time and he mm -hmm. played the leadership role ruthless bloodthirsty killer it's the apocalypse that's probably a better leader to have on day one right so he built a lot quickly but on day 7095 you know those leaders either get bumped off because people get sick of them or they realize it's time for me to leave mm -hmm. and let something mature so i think he got kind of a bad rap for that i, I agree i think it was kind of he, he was playing a role he also had people under him who were more violent than him. Oh my God, yes. that one because, guy. Uh, because <laughs> one of the things name. about Negan that we've <clears throat> talked about, Negan has a code. And also, Negan does not lie. If he's going to do something, he's going to do it. If he tells you this, that's done. If he doesn't say it, it's not done. So even like with the scavengers, he literally told Simon, okay, so since they decided to betray us, Go to them, make sure they understand what it is to betray yeah. us. Kill one. That was his whole thing, kill one. Simon was the one who was like, yeah, I'm so tired of listening to this guy, we're gonna kill all of them, you know? And it's just like, because he had that whole thing, that whole I am Negan thing, that's where I think a lot of the, that's where a lot of the issue comes from because you have people who are acting in your name but who may not necessarily be doing the things that you want to do. Like we find out in Dead City about the kid that the Croat killed. Mm -hmm. Negan has very clear rules. We don't kill children. Mm -hmm. That's another reason why the discussion comes up as far as the whole subject with his wives because people are saying that it's coercion. And I'm like, I look at it differently. When you're in that type of environment or that type of community, transactional relationships, they are a thing. And Negan has always had a very clear thing. We don't rape women. I don't want to be part of a community that allows it. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of, it conflicts with what other people say about his character or how other people look at his character. Because if you look at the things that he personally says and things that he personally does, and then you look at some of the other stuff that's happened, you'll realize that a lot of the stuff that's happened that's attributed to him were actually done by other people following him. Yeah. The whole problem, again, is the whole I am Negan thing. If this is how you want to rule your your community, that everyone is a part of you, okay, then you have to take the good with the bad. Yeah. So I think the answer to the family's question, bat wins over cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw a uh, monkey wrench in your debate. From the point of view of the people who won, 
so of the point of view of the Alexandria Hilltop communities. At the time, yes, absolutely should execute. Looking at it from their point of view, they're, they're the victors, and we all know, you know, the victor rights to history. So looking from their point of view, absolutely Rick should have taken them out. But the fact that he did not, like we all said, has shown he gives opportunity, he has in fact earned the redemption. He has done what he needed to do, and very much like the reason I love Carol, my favorite hero, Negan gets things done. Mm -hmm. You may not like the way he does it, but as we all said, you almost have to look at the post-apocalyptic world as the old feudal societies of the Middle Ages. King Richard didn't care what the Normans needed. Now, King Richard didn't care what the Vikings needed. If it, if it benefited his kingdom to take out a Viking encampment, so be it, your stuff is my stuff. And the Vikings the same way. A Viking raiding was nothing more than, I need this, I need it more than you, and well, I guess I'm stronger. And that's all Negan did. Negan took care of Negan's people. In fact, you were one of his people? Yeah, well, things happen. Rich people all <laughs> die. I mean, I will say, like, one short thing, and that is that I disagree with you on the wives thing, but the fact that Negan has a code is, I think, very imperative to whether or not he deserved that redemption arc. Now, that said, he for sure, in my opinion, deserved that redemption arc more than Gregory ever deserved anything. Like, if we're talking about really crappy leaders, honestly, Gregory was in so many ways worse than Negan. And good riddance. <laughs> Gregory caused as many problems as did <laughs> Rick and the Negan. Yeah, let's go back further. See, Gregory caused it, when you really think about it. Because Gregory's the one that asks. He's the one that's made the deal. I saw mm. Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I am a Madison apologist. I love Madison and she's my babe. I want to know y'all's opinion on her. <sighs> Oh, I like Madison a lot. I My only issue with her is the way she was brought back at the end of Fear the Walking Dead. I thought the whole thing, like, I just wish they hadn't killed her off in the first place or or that they had brought her back sooner um, and maybe in a slightly different way. But no, I, I really, like I said earlier, like I didn't love the first season of Fear the Walking Dead, but seasons two and, and like I said, I can't remember if it was all of three or most of it were really good. And it was like almost entirely due to Madison in my opinion, so. So I'm, I am not a Madison fan. <laughs> um, Madison's character is actually one of the reasons why I stopped watching Fear the Walking Dead in season three. I only came back once Morgan crossed over and John Dory entered the picture. Oh, John Dory. I was like, okay, I need to, I need to see what's going on. <laughs> I have a very big problem with the way that they brought Madison back for the final season. Part of the problem is the fact that the people who had been there, that the stories that we have been following, just got pushed to the side and disappeared. Justice for Sarah and Wendell, like you pushed those characters aside for the mess that you brought with, you know, Madison. The whole thing about them bringing her back as a child kidnapper, if they had done anything else to bring her back, I could have been okay with it. But the fact that they brought her back as a person who snatched children from other parents, this is a woman who whatever I felt about her in the early seasons, this was a woman who was about protecting her family and her children. And for them to bring her back in that way, I felt was so disrespectful to the character. And it just made everything that came afterwards for me, just, I, I could not stand it. I hate watched the rest of that show. Not to mention the end where they like wrap up her story with, and like just, <laughs> With the kid the beautiful, that tried like, to kill like, her. They put it in a Tiffany's box <laughs> with, the, with the bow and everything. And like Alicia is still alive. Madison, what is yeah. happening here? Stop. Stop. Yeah. If they, if they could have, if they could have brought her back in a different way that made sense, it would have been okay. But yeah. then you make the whole final season about these kidnapped children. And then all of a sudden now she has a conscience trying to reunite these kids and she's doing it for Alicia. But, I can't say what I want to say because it's too early in the day. <laughs> but yeah, I I was n not a fan. Because you know what's funny, when you, when you think about that, so remember how they kind of end all these things? Mm -hmm. There's all these uncompleted conspiracies, mm -hmm. right? It always seems like, you know, it's kind of coming to the mm -hmm. end where it's like, 
it's either kidnapping, it's, it's a bio thing, or it's a government thing. But they wrap everything up, and they say it's part of this conspiracy, but they never settle what any of these conspiracies are really about. So you're right, they put the gifts, but they never explain, well, who the hell's buying all these gifts and bringing them to all these people? <laughs> They're alluding to all these, and we're getting this more in the European thread and, and some with the CRM, but hey, I think the CRM is less conspiracy and more just you know, big government trying yeah, to, to so go too. inside there. But yeah, there's a whole lot of seeded conspiracies, the whole the CDC Atlanta stuff from the very beginning mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. None of that is ever wrapped up. So I, I that doesn't mean I don't love shows. I love all the shows. But it just they're means not that close we're get and, walking dead yeah, content for the next yeah. fifty yeah, years. They're, they're right, exactly. Character arcs. They're doing a good job about kind of wrapping those up. But not you know, not entirely. Because, well, yeah, because, because and I think, back, so. <laughs> but no, no, I mean, no, no more Morgan. <laughs> but I mean, oh, Morgan's twin brother. <laughs> that I mean, so okay, long. since you mentioned twins, we have a whole other twin on Fear mm -hmm. the Walking Dead yep. that was part of the storyline, and he was one of those people that just all of a sudden disappeared. Like yep. you don't even, and you address that in a throwaway line from Victor about oh yeah i went i went to go try to talk to them and when i went all of them were dead excuse me you had us follow these people for two three seasons and you're just going to throw them away with one mm -hmm. line i had a problem with that and it was all because they wanted to bring madison back and they wanted to focus on that you know kind of book in the series we started with madison and her family we end with madison and her family and everybody else be whatever <laughs> yeah. this fall on the next expansion <laughs> <laughs> we are coming to an end here we have time for i saw two more hands up with we'll last two questions that's not really a question i just know that y'all had spoke about um we don't know what caused the zombies and whatnot i read an article that probably about 2017 2018 with I'm not sure if it's one of the writers of the show or one of the writers of the original comic, but they said they did that intentionally to not officially like categorize. But I, I know it still bugs me. <laughs> yeah, I read the same. It was actually Kirkland, and I remember yeah. the same article. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, whole thing with the the nukes being launched, but nobody on any of the other shows really delve into the effects of the fallout. Like it wasn't covered with the CRM. You know, the the one that killed the kids. Wasn't covered by the, the French in the uh, episodes with Daryl. You know, you would have figured Daryl's like, well, yeah, these nuclear missiles launched all over the place and there's fallout everywhere. You well, know? I think because they were so far apart, because um, the nuclear <clears throat> missiles were in Texas uh -huh. and Alexandria is in Virginia, the Commonwealth is up in Ohio, and the CRM is over on the upper. East Coast, so I think it was in it was far enough away that it didn't have an impact on them. But if you look on the ones who live, and in the opening credits where they kind of show you the map of where the CRM is in the country, you you will see there in Texas they do have a radioactive signal, so the CRM is aware of it. But I guess they're like, okay, well those people are probably dead or they're dying anyway. We're just going to leave that alone. Yeah. So it probably just wasn't important enough for them because they didn't realize that these people had figured out a way to live amongst radiation. So, yeah. yeah that's that would make the story very complicated for the characters mm -hmm. too because yeah. then the challenge isn't the the environment that you're in with the apocalypse and the zombies and the warlords mm -hmm. on really everyone trying not to die of radiation. Right, which is which they cover the quite a bit in here. The issue that you would so constrain the yeah. story. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not even oh that that town over there, we're at war with that town. No, you're not. It's, you're trying not to yep. die of radiation poisoning. You're trying to get clean water. You know, you go back to survive, basic survival requirement versus really interaction, storytelling, mm -hmm. things yeah. like that. So it would make it real hard. Yeah, I mean, and they touched on that that in fear, like for half a season or so. And you're right. Like, I'm glad they did not drag it out any longer than they did with the people, like, just trying not to get radiation poisoning because it was it it did it made it yeah. smaller like i don't want to see everybody in masks for six episodes straight you know but if they're not wearing them they're gonna get real sick real fast all right well that brings us to the end i want to thank our audience thank our panelists and i want to thank you all for joining us and wish you a wonderful dragon con thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you for listening to the Geek Saga podcast. If you like what you heard, please check out other Geek Saga entertainment endeavors, including the Sagas and Sass webcast and podcast and Ice and Fire Con.